Alright, so just if you can close your eyes, take a breath. Alright. Mm -hmm. And just breathe. Mm -hmm. So the goal here is just to become present again. To allow your mind to come back home to the present moment, to the right now, where you are. <coughs> Become aware once again of your breath. See if you can imagine your brain waves syncing up with the gentle rhythm of your breath. What does it feel like to just be here now? What does that feel like? And what does it feel like to feel yourself in the circle of like-minded beings who also want to hear the truth and to be healed by it? What does that feel like? What does it feel like to not be alone in a holy purpose, healing yourself and healing the world? And I want you to see if you can detect a presence in the present. See if you can tune into a presence that's always there waiting in the present. And just breathe it in. Invite it back into your awareness. Say hello to it. Remember that presence. And I want you to imagine yourself uniting in purpose with that presence. And ask that presence for its holy word for you today. What's its message for you today? And then listen. Practice, practice listening to that still small voice that is normally 
drowned out by the harsh and grating sounds of the world. Tune in to that still small voice and listen for its message for you. And we ask this still small voice, what would you have me remember? Where would you have me go? What would you have me do? And what would you have me say and to whom? And then listen. And then give a silent word of gratitude to this presence within you, to this voice within you, thanking it for never abandoning you, even when you would try to forget it, and for always calling you back, even when you would wander away from light source. Thank it. It is real and it is has kept you on the path of light. needs a book. There's two left up here. And let me tell you where we're going to be at today. Right here. Okay, so we're going to be in the workbook. And um, it is the, it is one of the sections, it's the introduction to the final lessons in the workbook. And in the original edition, would you say that page again, 485? 485. 485. 485, okay. In the workbook, it's called The Final Lessons. <laughs> and it's the, it's what, it's, it is, um, The Final Lessons is just five days of the same lesson, okay. And so, this is the introduction to those, and it's also, Assuming that you have spent the year up to this, up to today, doing the workbook lessons one each day. Now, I know that's a mega assumption that our <laughs> teacher is making. But if you were doing the workbook lessons each starting from January 1st, you know, and going one a day, this is where you'd be at 
today. And I also feel like it's the, when I was reading it, I was feeling like it was the perfect New Year's lesson. Because it really does, it really does set a very high purpose for the year to come. Okay? So I, I dedicate this lesson to our New Year's blessing. Our New Year's, I don't like to use the word resolution. But it is a beautiful way of setting the new year into a, a holy purpose, a high purpose. So that's why I chose this. So it really is like this section, like when this came through, it really was going into the time of the new year. Okay. So I join you in using these ideas today to be your new year's resolution but a different kind of New Year's resolution. A different kind of New Year's resolution, okay? So maybe we could say um, a goal for a truly new year. Like how would you have a year that really was new? Not just a, a repeat of the old one, but a year that was really actually different where you look back and go, that was different. That was truly different. This is a way that you could, if you were to like join with this goal right here, that our teacher is presenting us, you really would have a different world, a, a different year, and not only a different year, but you would experience a different world. Okay, so let's use today and use the energy of the group to join with that new purpose, or that new year purpose, and that new world purpose. Okay, <clears throat> all right, is that a good goal? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a bit, and then I'll I'll open the floor for questions or comments. Okay. So, final lessons, introduction. <clears throat> and I'm sorry, I'm getting over a cold, so I will, he, I will sound schmutzy. <laughs> schmutzy, yes, okay. <laughs> I got schmutz in here. <clears throat> schmutz is coming out. Perfect for the end of the year. All right. All my old schmutz is coming out. All right. So... It says, our final lessons will be left as free of words as possible in our final lessons. We will use words only at the beginning of our practicing and only to remind us that we seek to go beyond them. So in these final lessons, it's not about the words anymore. We've spent 360 days with a lot of words. These last few days, we're only going to use words at the beginning of our practice to remind us that we actually are going to go beyond words. Nice. Then he says, so, instructions, let us turn to him who leads the way, and let us turn to him who makes our footsteps sure. Okay? So that's what we're going to be doing in these final lessons. What is the instructions? We're going to do what? We're going to turn to our teacher, our guide, who's leading our way. And what are we also going to do? We're going to let him make our footsteps sure in these final lessons. Okay, so we're going to use these words. We're going to say the sentence. Okay, fine. Only to remind us we're going beyond the words to do what? To, to turn to our teacher. The words are this, that. Point, turn toward teacher. Great. Turn toward teacher. That's all these words are supposed to be for. To turn you to your teacher to do what? So that your teacher can make sure your footsteps are sure. Meaning what? Going in the right direction. So that's really what it's about. Isn't that nice? Allow myself to be turned in the right direction toward my teacher so that my teacher can make sure that my footsteps stay on the right path. That's what the words are for. He says... Another instruction, we, to our teacher, we leave these lessons. As to our teacher, we give our lives henceforth. Why? Because we don't want to return again to the belief in sin. Why? Because it's the belief in sin that made our world seem ugly. It's the belief in sin that made our world seem unsafe. It's of the belief in sin that made our world seem attacking. It's the belief in sin that made our world seem destroying. 
It's the belief in sin that made our world seem dangerous, and not only that, but also treacherous beyond the hope of trust. Mm -hmm. And treacherous beyond the hope of escape from pain. That's a pretty vivid description of our world, mm -hmm. huh? Wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. That's why our world seems scary. That, so it's interesting to me, like, the reason my world seems dangerous, treacherous, destroying, attacking, unsafe, treacherous beyond all hope, and treacherous beyond all hope of escape from pain. Okay. What? How did my world get to be like that? Mm. How did that happen? Is that just because the, the world is evil? No, it's actually because of my belief in sin, meaning my belief in guilt, my belief in sin. My belief in sin made the world seem so dangerous and treacherous and unsafe. I, don't, I for one, am tired of, of being afraid of my world, right? And so when it says the belief in sin made the world like that, to me that means, like, the, the Course defines sin as the belief that you can make a mistake that's beyond correction, or the belief that others have made mistakes that are beyond correction. Okay? That's what sin really means. You know, when you regard someone else's mistakes as like beyond the hope of correction, that's you believing in sin. When you behold any of your own past mistakes as beyond correction, like, oh, well, love can't take care of that. Love can't handle that. And that's the way you that's the way you see other people's mistakes. You see what they did and you're like, mm, 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 you know, and you tell yourself, you know, and you don't tell yourself, well, love can correct that. Love can correct that. Yeah, I see that that person just hurt that other person. Yes, I see that that person did that. Yes, I see that they did that. But that's not beyond love. That's not beyond love to correct. Thank God love can correct that. Thank God love can correct that. I see that war. I see that disease. I see that murder. <clears throat> I see that. Sure, I'm glad nothing's beyond love to correct. Okay? If I don't have that perception, and I look at it and I go, oh, no. And I, and I perceive it as if it is beyond the, the ability of love to correct. Like, it can't be corrected. Like, there's something beyond love's ability to correct. That is my belief in sin. And that's why my world scares the living daylights out of me. That's why my world seems dangerous, treacherous, unsafe, attacking, and beyond the hope of escape from pain. I'll never escape from pain. Wow. So when I hear that, I'm like, oh, okay, so the way out of experiencing the world as dangerous and destroying and treacherous is to... Remember that there is no sin, meaning there's nothing that love can't correct. Not that war, not that murder, not that, not that, not that, not this. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. That's, that's the, when I hear that, I'm like, okay, I might be able to experience some safety in my world if I will take that belief in sin and let it be corrected. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm always looking for the ideas that will help me to experience my world as safe. And if I'm the one saying and believing that there's some things that love cannot correct in the world, I'm the one making it seem so dangerous and treacherous. Okay? All right. Then it goes on to say his, meaning our teacher, the voice God gave us to be our guide, His is the only way to find the peace that God has given us. What way? Our teacher's way. Our teacher's way. Our teacher's way. The teacher God gave us, the voice God gave us to guide us, that's the only way to find the peace. What peace? The peace that God has given us. Mm -hmm. Not the peace that God will give you if you're good. <laughs> No, the peace that God has given you. You have it. It's a done deal. 
You have it. You have it. This is a journey back to what you already have, but forgot. And that's what I like about this journey. It's not about, well, I've got to find something I don't have. i got to find something I don't have. I hope I make it. I hope I can earn it. I hope once I get it, I don't lose it again. This is a journey to back to just remembering what you have already been given and that you can't lose. And it says, says then, huh, I just lost my place. Sorry. Here we go. Okay. It is his way, our teacher's way, that everyone must travel in the end. Because it is this ending that God himself appointed. In the dream of time, this ending of the dream seems to be far off. And yet, in truth, the ending of our dream is already here, already serving us as gracious guidance in the way to go. That's interesting. The end of this dream. What dream? The world is a dangerous, unsafe, and treacherous, beyond the hope of escape from pain, dream. That dream. The ending of that dream is already here, already serving us as gracious guidance in the way to go. Nice. So again, once again, it's already here. It's already here. What? Available. 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 If what? If you will turn to your teacher and let your teacher guide you. If you will turn to your teacher and let your teacher guide you. Okay? <laughs> then it says, and given that, let us together follow in the way that truth points out to us. And, so we're supposed to together, that means together, I think that means together, <laughs> I think that means together, right? <laughs> Okay, I'm so used to doing things by myself that when he says do something together, there's a part of me that's like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look like me, though. <laughs> <laughs> They're different. Together, let us follow in the way that truth points out. So I guess, the, so I guess we're supposed to come together and let truth guide us together. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? It's interesting how the Course very often talks about how that God's, God's answer or His way is given into hands that are joined. Mm -hmm. You know, and my ego hates that because I just want to do it by myself. It's just easier, mm -hmm. right? You know, we haven't, we're not all that great at getting along with mm -hmm. other people for long, you know. We're pretty good, like, you know, like quick one on quick encounters but he says that you know that he's saying let us together follow let us together follow in the way that what that truth points out to us we're supposed to come together and listen together to what truth the way that truth points out just like we're doing today just like we're doing today all right and he says so that's an instruction we're supposed to do that so good, that's what we're doing today. And then here's the next instruction. We're also supposed to let ourselves be the leaders of our many brothers who are seeking for the way, but find it not. Okay. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to get together, listen together to what? To the truth. Notice it didn't even say, listen to each other. <laughs> We're supposed to listen, we're supposed to get together and listen to the, the truth and let it point out the way for us. Then we're also supposed to allow ourselves to be the leaders of the many people who are seeking for truth but are not finding it. Mm. Wow, interesting. And he says, let us be the leaders. Mm. Let us be the leaders. Interesting. Okay, so it's interesting. Those who are supposed to be the leaders of the, of the people who are seeking the truth but are not finding it are also the people who are supposed to first listen together, together 
to the truth, not to each other, to the truth, and let the truth guide them. And then let themselves be the, the leaders of the many brothers and sisters who are seeking the truth but are not finding it. Interesting. Interesting directions from our teacher. You know, he's teaching us the way. This is the way. What to what? To the peace that God has already given us. To the peace that we already have. Pretty clear instructions, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I love about this book. It's just one instruction after another. Very clear, very easy to do. You can do it any moment, in the moment, any moment, anywhere. Instruction, instruction, instruction. To the point where you don't have to figure it out. You don't have to decide anything. You don't have to judge anything. You just have to listen, listen, listen together and follow. And then let yourself be the leader of others after you've been after you've allowed yourself to be led. Well, that's what that's what we're doing here. Okay, this is the that's the way. Now, then it says, <clears throat> and to this purpose of doing what we just said, let us dedicate our minds, which means what? Directing all our thoughts to serve the function of salvation. I would say that's a pretty high goal for the new year, wouldn't mm -hmm. you? Okay. And what is it? To this purpose letting yourself be led together by truth and then letting yourself be the leaders of those who are seeking the truth but not find it. To that purpose, dedicate your minds. Let us dedicate our minds to that purpose. How do we do that? We direct all our thoughts to serve the function of salvation. I hereby direct all my thoughts to serve the function of salvation. What is the function of Thank salvation? Thank you. <laughs> to join together <clears throat> to together follow in the way that truth points out and to let yourself be the leaders of the many people who are seeking the truth but haven't found it so that's the function of salvation so what is salvation salvation is the plan for the healing of mankind that's what salvation is Right? You know, we lost our way, apparently. We've totally forgotten as a, as a race, as a species, that our purpose is to love each other and take care of each other and love the earth and support the earth and create along the lines of our own creation. We forgot about that. We, we forgot that that was our purpose. We, we forgot and thought we were just a body. And that all of our needs was to maintain and protect our body. And hence came war. And after war came disease and famine. We forgot that really our purpose here is to remember as one. And to help each other as one. Right? So salvation is the plan by which that purpose and that remembrance is restored to mankind. That's pretty much, that's salvation. Okay, so he's saying, let us, let this per, let us dedicate our minds to this purpose. In other words, let's direct all of our thoughts to serving that function. What function? Let myself be healed, join in letting myself be healed, and then healing others. That's it. That's it. Let all my thoughts be directed to serving salvation that holy function, right, in this new year, okay? Wouldn't that be great if, your ma, if all your thoughts were directed to serving that purpose? What would your mind be like? <laughs> what would your world be like? What would your relationships be like? Really, if, that, if your mind was truly unified, in that purpose, and all your thoughts were directed to 
how can I let my mind be healed of guilt and fear so that I can then help others to be free of guilt and fear so that the world can be awakened? Can you imagine? What would your mind be like if it was unified on that purpose? What would it be like to even have a unified mind? <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> A mind that didn't seem to be fractured off into all these different people and purposes and needs, right? Of course, as our mind has been split into all these different levels as represented needs. Our mind has been split. I have all these different needs. You know, I'm a body, I'm a spirit, I'm a mind. And so I have all these needs. And so I'm always like, Oh, well, I'm always serving these different needs and different levels of my self. And then they say, he says, and do you wonder why you feel so conflicted? Because your mind is fractured into different levels with different needs. Your mind isn't integrated. It's not one. And so your mind doesn't function as one. Your mind functions as a fractured machine, right? So, if you, if you direct all your thoughts to serve one purpose, the purpose of the great awakening of mankind, then your mind becomes integrated. And when your mind becomes integrated, it becomes effective and powerful and creative as it was meant to be. Mm -hmm. as it is in its nature, okay? So this is a great way to restore the integrity of your mind, which of course it really says is what we call the atonement, the restoration of the integrity of the mind. In other words, now my mind is one <laughs> instead of many, right? You ever feel like there's many who live inside you? <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever told you, there's so many people inside you? <laughs> I don't know which one is real. <laughs> okay. He says, and to this purpose, let us dedicate our minds. How do we do that? We direct all our thoughts to serve the function of salvation, which is the great awakening. And he says, unto us, the aim is given to forgive the world. What is that? Unto us the aim is given to forgive the world. That's the other purpose of salvation, the function of salvation. What's the function of salvation? The aim of forgiving the world. And that's a pretty good goal because, well, that's the goal God gave you. That's the goal God gave you. You need a goal? You need a purpose? Okay. Forgive the world. There can be no higher purpose to have or to serve, right? Forgive the world. That's the goal God gave you. Wow, that's interesting. He says, and he says, you forgiving the world is God's ending. It is God's ending to the dream that we want. It is God's ending to the dream we want. Forgiving the world is the ending to the dream. It's the ending to the dream we seek. And it's not our own ending. Okay. Would you like an ending of the dream of the world as dangerous and treacherous and unsafe and attacking? Would you like the end of that dream? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if you, the end of that dream is having the goal of forgiving the world. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. If that's how my dream of a scary world ends... I'll take it. All right, my goal is to forgive the world. All right. Then he says, because all that we forgive, we will not fail to recognize as part of God himself. And then, and in that way, God's memory is given back completely and complete. In other words, it is our function to remember God on earth. Oh, that's why I'm here. That's what I'm supposed to be doing here. Oh, yeah. I thought it was to become as special as possible. As soon as possible to as many as possible. 
Right. Exactly. Also the belief in sin. <laughs> but really, it is our function to remember God on earth. Just to remember God. Hi, God. Oh, yeah, God. That's our function on earth. And just like it is given us to be God's own completion in reality. So, okay, so that's our function. And he says, so, let us not forget our goal is shared, for it is that remembrance which contains the memory of God and points the way to God and to the heaven of God's peace. And shall we not forgive each other, each other who can offer all this to us? It says, our brother is the way, the truth, and life that shows the way to us. In our brother resides salvation offered us through our forgiveness given unto them. Aha. Uh -huh. So our function is to remember God on earth and also... Because of that, or sh shall we not forgive each other? Shall we not forgive each other when they are the truth, the way, and the life? Why? Because, because salvation is offered us through forgiving them. Okay. If my release from my suffering comes as I forgive you, then what are you to me? If my salvation comes every time I forgive you, what are you to me? My Savior. That's right. Mm -hmm. You're my Savior. Mm -hmm. Which is a little different than I have been perceiving you. <laughs> Which is the, the, the competitor in, to my peace. The, the way that we tend to see each other, the way our egos see each other as our, the plunderer of our peace. That's the way we see each other. You're the plunderer of my peace. In other words, i got to watch out for you. You could hurt me. You could take my peace from me. You could. If I made you special enough, you could take all my love, all my peace, and run away and give it to someone else. Mm -hmm. Or you could take all my love, all my joy, and then die. Mm -hmm. You are the plunderer of my peace. Yeah, and if we are different and you have a different purpose, then for me to have my purpose accomplished, I have to defend myself against you. <laughs> right? That's the way that our ego wants us to see each other. And the truth is, is that this is your Savior. <laughs> because you only are released from your pain, your limitations, your fear, as you forgive them. And what does it mean to for even forgive them? It just means this. We are the same. We are one. We are not different. We are the same. We are one. We are not different. That's what it means to forgive. It just means to see no differences. We're not different. Right? You want peace? I want peace. You are either giving love or you're calling for love? Me too. Right? That's what it means to forgive them. It's real simple. It's not like, I know what you did. I'll get over it. That is not forgiveness. <laughs> I know what you did. I'll never forget, but I'll get over it because I am a Course in Miracles student. <laughs> that is not forgiveness. Okay. So, here we go. Then he says, We will not end this year without the gift that our Father promised to us. His holy, which means whole son. That's us. We are God's whole child. Okay? We're not going to end this year without the gift that God promised us. His whole child. Okay? Isn't that nice? God's holy son means God's whole child. And that's us. Okay? Okay? So we're not going to end this year without the gift God gave us. <clears throat> we are forgiven now. What does that mean? What does that mean, we are forgiven now? It just means this. It means we are saved from all the wrath we thought belonged to God. <laughs> to say you are forgiven does not mean I know what you did. 
but I'll overlook it because I'm God. God is not Santa Claus. We are forgiven now, which means we are saved from all the wrath we thought belonged to God because we found that all the wrath we thought belonged to God was a dream. It was just a dream. All the anger we thought belonged to God, it was just a dream. All the anger we thought belonged to God was just a dream. We found that out. That's how we have been forgiven. And he says, he says, and because of all that, we found out that all the wrath that belonged to God was just a dream. Now we are restored to sanity. Now we are restored to sanity. What does it mean to be restored to sanity? It means we understand that anger is insane, attack is mad, and vengeance merely foolish fantasy. Oh, that's a great definition of sanity. I think I'll try to remember that. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if I meet the conditions of sanity. Okay. What does it mean to be restored to sanity? I understand that anger is insane. Okay, I failed that one. Attack is mad. Oops. Hold on. And vengeance merely foolish fantasy. When you remember that, oh my God, my anger is insane. My vengeance is merely foolish fantasy, and attack is mad. When you remember that, you have been restored to sanity. Wow. And you are restored to sanity when you realize that, that, that no wrath belongs to God. God is not angry. God is not angry. And so I don't need to be either. And that's what restores your sanity. When you mean by sanity, I mean where your mind is integrated and your mind becomes one again instead of a fractured war zone. That's what it means to be restored to sanity. Okay? When I'm angry, what happens? My mind fractures. And what happens when my mind fractures? It's the war, the, the different factions war with each other. My mind goes into war with itself. The war against yourself. That's a mind that's not at one, right? So when you are restored to sanity, it means that you have realized and remembered that anger is insane. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. He says, also, we've been saved from wrath, or we can say we've been saved from anger. Why or how? Because we learned we were mistaken. Isn't that great to know mm. that you are saved from anger? You are saved from wrath. You're saved from the anger of God, because you learned I was just a dream. And you're also saved from your own anger, your own wrath. Your wrath at others, because they didn't fulfill your expectations. Mm -hmm. And your own wrath at yourself, because I didn't fulfill my own expectations. <laughs> right? And of course, you know, like... You know, as good course students, we tend to, like, once we've learned that, you know, that we're responsible, we take the wrath and the anger we've been projecting out and then we project it onto ourselves. I'm not a good course student. Oh, my God, I'm still angry. Now I'm angry at myself for still being angry. Right? It says, you're saved from wrath, yours or others, and God's. Why? How? Because you learned you were just mistaken. Nothing more than that. That's how you're saved from wrath. That's how you're saved from anger. That's how you're saved from insanity. You, because you have learned you were mistaken. So you go like this. Oh, I was mistaken. That's it. That's how you're saved from wrath. That's how you're saved from anger. And that's how you are saved from hell in that regard. Wow. And vengeance. He says, nothing more than that. And is a father angry at his son just because the son failed to understand the truth? Wow. So, you, so the end of wrath, the end of anger and vengeance and all that comes from that is realizing, I was mistaken. I was mistaken. I was mistaken. And all my wrath and anger and vengeance and all that came from that, oh, I was just mistaken. And then, is a father angry at their child just because the child was mistaken? Well, 
So he says, so instead, here's what we do. We come in honesty to God, and this is what we say to God. God, I did not understand. We come to God like a child. God, I did not understand. And then we ask God to help us learn God's lessons through the voice of God's own teacher. So that's, that's how we're saved from wrath. We go, wow, I, admit was, I went insane with anger and wrath, and I thought that wrath belonged to God. That was a mistake. That was a dream. My God, look at all the carnage that came from the anger and the insanity and the vengeance. God. God, I was mistaken. I did not understand. Isn't that nice? That's the end of the dream of anger and vengeance and all the carnage that comes. I mean, what really does come after anger? Does, it, does resolution come? Do you go, I'm so glad I went off on that person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so glad I went off on them and told them, my, gave them a piece of my mind. I'm so glad I did. Look at the beauty and the peace and the abundance <laughs> and the health that now surrounds me. <laughs> I mean, really, the only thing that comes from vengeance and anger and wrath and blame is carnage, war. Right? And so, but the end of that, it all ends a world that literally is just nothing but the carnage of, of anger and, and attack and vengeance is you going to God like a child and saying, I was wrong. I have been mistaken. And I ask you to help me learn your lessons of peace through the voice you gave me. And that it? That's it. That's how the world of angry carnage is turned into heaven. And he says, now, once you've come to God like a child and you said, I was mistaken, I did not understand God, please teach me your lessons of peace through your voice. He says, would God, would God hurt you <laughs> when you come to God like that? Is God going to gay? I told you so! <laughs> <laughs> You're in timeout. <laughs> you know, is that what God's going to say when you come to Him? You know, would God hurt you when you came to Him and said that? Or would God rush to answer you saying, You're my child. All I have is yours. Wait a minute. I just created a world of carnage that came out of my wrath and my anger and my insanity. I just created a whole world. <laughs> of war and anger and wrath and insanity for nothing and all, and all you're saying is you love me and all you have is all that's yours is mine Woo, well that's the kind of love none of us can, can, can understand huh mm -hmm. <laughs> you said you know the peace that passes understanding the love that passes understanding that's it that's what you get when you come to God like a child and you go, I was mistaken, I did not understand, please teach me your lessons through your voice within me, that's all God says. Now, I told you so, <laughs> you had it coming to you, I tried to tell you, I tried to send you all these teachers, what you do to them, thanks a lot. He doesn't say that, he just says, you are my child, everything that I have is yours. Okay. He says, be certain that that's how God will answer you. Be certain that's how God will answer you. Because these are God's own words to you. And more than those words, no one can ever have. More than those words, no one can ever have. You can't have. There ain't nothing more than that. God's saying, you're my child. All that I have, yours. All I have, yours. That's it. You can't have more than that. That is your inheritance. You can't be given more than that. And he says, for in these words is all there is. And all there will be throughout all time and eternity. Wow. You can't, you can't get more than that. You can't get any better than that. You are my child. Everything I have. 
is yours. Wow, that means everything that is, is yours. All the power, all the love, all the abundance, all of eternity, everything that's real, everything that's eternal, forever, is yours. And can you think of anything that you might want more than that? Can they, what is more than that? Wow. He goes, so, he goes, not, that's all there is, that's all there will be throughout eternity. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, that's the end of the intro to this lesson. Now, so that was the intro to this lesson. Now I'm going to have you, uh, I'm going to do the, this lesson that all that was an introduction to. That's quite an introduction to a lesson, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not bad. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to do the love offering, any announcements, and then as the closing integration meditation, we're going to do that. Okay? So, here is this. I'm going to start this around here. Thank you guys for your financial expressions of appreciation. I appreciate them. Earl appreciates them. The church appreciates them. They are much appreciated. I do a Course in Miracles class every Monday night at the Rocky Mountain Miracle Center. Every Monday night, 7.30 to 9. It's drop-in, um, donation, and we are back at the beginning of the book. I'm doing the original edition, not the edited version that you guys are using. The first four chapters, there's a lot in it that is not, that was taken out of the edited version. So I'm teaching those first four chapters because they're chock full of good, juicy stuff. Um, so I'm doing that every Monday, 7.30. The address to the Rocky Mountain Miracle Center is on my business card, which are right here on the table. So pick one up if you'd like. I'm also a holistic uh, psychotherapist and I do miracle psychotherapeutic sessions where I combine the, the brilliant psychotherapy of the Course in Miracles, the brilliant psychology of the Course, and the miracle principles of the Course to um, create profound transformations in any area of your life that need it. Okay? So that's something I do. I'm also a licensed professional counselor. And if you want more information on that, you can pick up my business card here. Or you can go to my website, annakajala.com. Okay? All right. So, Happy New Year to all you guys. May your new year be truly new. <laughs> May you experience a year and also a world free from wrath. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would really like to experience. Where I'm not like I'm not insane with anger all the time. Imagine that. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure none of you guys are angry with anybody else anymore. I'm just talking about, you know, the anger you still have with yourself about, you know, the expectations that you have for yourself, that, you know, the ideals you have for yourself that you didn't quite meet up, that you didn't quite fulfill or live up to, you know. You know, the things us good spiritual folks are upset about ourselves about. <laughs> <clears throat> I had such high goals for myself. <laughs> and I fell flat. <laughs> what happened to those goals? Right? Those are the things we tend to be angry at ourselves now that we have uh, at least realized that anger with others is insane. Okay. So, I'm going to get some music going. Okay, so this lesson that we're about to do is very simply how to do exactly what it just told us to do in that section that we just did. Okay? So, so if at the end of me doing that section you're like, well, what should I do? Just in case. Then this is what you're supposed to do and this prayer and process encapsulates all the instructions that we just heard to do in the last section. Okay? So as you are listening to it, let's just do it. It's funny, the name of this tune is I Am Willing. 
<laughs> Great. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> this is the way that we turn to, to our teacher and we let our teacher put our feet certainly on the path back to the peace that God has already given us. This is how we allow our minds to be healed together so that we can then be the leaders for others who seek for peace but haven't found it yet. This is how we do it. We say to our teacher, we say, this holy instant do I give to you, teacher. This, ho this holy instant do I give to you, teacher. Teacher within, be you in charge. For I would follow you, teacher within, certain that your direction gives me peace. This precious moment would I give to you, voice for God within me. Be you in charge of this precious moment. Because I want to follow you. Because I'm certain that your direction <coughs> will give me peace. And if I need a word to help me, my teacher will give it to me. And if I need a thought, that will my teacher also give. And if I only need stillness and a tranquil, open mind, then these are the gifts I will receive of the voice God has given me. The voice that God has given me is in charge by my request. And the voice that God has given to guide me will hear me and answer me. Because the voice that God has given me speaks for God, God my creator, and me, his whole son, his whole child. So after I say that prayer, this holy instant what I give to you, then I listen knowing that if I need a word to help me, my teacher will give that to me. Or if I need a thought to help me, my teacher will give that to me. And if I only just need stillness and a tranquil open mind, then that too my teacher will give me. My teacher is in, ch is in charge at my request. <laughs> And I know that my teacher will hear me. And I know that my teacher will answer me. Because my teacher within speaks for God, my creator. And for me, God's precious, precious child. And so I'm now going to say that prayer one more time. And then let's just do it. This precious moment do I give to you, teacher within, be you in charge. For I would follow you, certain that your direction will bring me peace. And just say that to yourself a few times over, allowing Allowing those ideas to deepen in your mind each time.
Beautiful. All right. Don't we say amen? Amen. All right. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you being here so that I can hear with you what I cannot hear by myself. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Awesome.